I'm going to get right into the book. The, uh, the book is a letter that a man is writing to his five-year-old son, uh, explaining why on this particular night he returned to the family farm to kill his own father and grandfather. That, my son, is all I have for your family tree. Other than my father and grandfather, of course. The photos that hang in this kitchen are all I knew of other humans for most of my stay at the farm. I say most because on one occasion I did catch a glimpse of life outside. I had just finished in the potato field for the day and was making my way back to the house for bed when I heard the sound of my grandfather's old truck rumbling down the dirt road. Now I will tell you that I was never before nor again left outside when my father knew Grandpa was, turning, Grandpa was returning from his monthly trip to town. It was one of those midsummer days when even the grasshoppers and ants are lazy. Nothing was moving particularly fast, especially not my father. I had just rounded the house when my grandfather parked his faded red pickup just outside the mill by the lake. I kind of half hid at the side of the house while he got out of the driver's door and hurried to the passenger side. I didn't know why I was hiding, I just was. At that point I knew I didn't want to be seen. I watched as my grandpa flung the door open and pulled out a young girl, likely 12 or 13. He had her firmly by the arm, even though she was not resisting. Keep in mind I had never seen to my recollection a living human being other than my father and grandfather at this point in my life. A wave of emotion shook through me. I thought, my God, there are others out there. I was shaken by the beauty of the creature my grandfather was leading towards the mill. She had the most beautiful long blonde hair and skin that appeared smoother than anything I'd ever seen or touched. She was wearing a brown flowered sundress. One of the straps was broken and lying loosely over her shoulder. The dress swayed in the summer breeze. In any other setting, it would have been a been the picture of a beautiful girl about to enjoy a perfect summer day down by the lake with family. Unfortunately, this was not any other setting. She was not going for a picnic of fried chicken and salad topped off with ice cold lemonade. This girl was about to see the sun for the last time. She would never feel the wind caress her skin, blowing her hair about her face again. The dry August leaves were rustling and the swaying branches were groaning for water when she looked up over the shoulder with a broken strap and spotted me. To this day, I do not know how she knew I was standing there, but she looked over and straight into my heart. Her dark eyes did not plead for help, nor were they angry, but they were not empty or lifeless. They were dark pools of resignation, shimmering with despair. My grandpa led her a few steps farther and then noticed her staring at me. He glared at me with his own large dark eyes. There was no other emotion but anger and hatred. He said nothing, just grabbed the girl by the arm, almost yanking it out of its socket. He led her like that to the mill, and outside of my dreams, I never saw her again. Thank you. <laughs>